The following is just a simple demonstration of a draconic reactor in draconic evolution powered by nothing but vanilla redstone, or I should say controlled by nothing but vanilla redstone. The two basic components that we're going to need are a comparator to control our output flux gates and some input flux gates. I just have infinite sources hooked up for, to them so that I don't have to worry about running out of energy. Uh, now, the philosophy I like to take for redstone control on a draconic reactor is that if any of this redstone is destroyed, the reactor should uh, drift towards a favorable state instead of an unfavorable one. So that means that the output flux gate should be powered by a high output to control the redstone output and then a redstone low signal of zero such that if any of this redstone were to break, the flux gate would instantly stop drawing power out of the reactor and thus cause it to cool down. The opposite is true for the input gate. I want the low signal to be, as, to be a very high amount of redstone flux such that if any of this redstone breaks, the reactor will be flooded with some input of flux which will cause the containment field to drift toward a more stable state as opposed to a less stable one. The comparator outputs that are used to drive this are determined by the redstone uh, the redstone mode for the uh, input injector and one of the reactor stabilizers. So the injector will be powering the input flux gate as they're closest to each other. So the injector is set to redstone mode shield, not minus shield, but shield, so that as the input field strength drops, this redstone signal coming out of this comparator will become weaker and weaker. As a result, this redstone signal will drop and cause more of, and cause the signal to go lower, which will cause the input flux gate to, fa uh, to, kind of drift toward this set value of 500,000. You you can make these values whatever you want. It doesn't have to be 500,000. That actually leaves a pretty high containment field strength when running a reactor with only this amount of fuel in it. For the output flux gate. I prefer to run my reactor based on saturation, so the because this is the the main driving force behind almost all of the other factors, uh, be it shield, uh, be it shield drain and temperature. So I have this set to positive saturation, so that as the saturation uh, lowers, meaning the reactor is going to be trying harder and generating more energy, this comparator will start outputting less and less redstone signal which will cause this input uh, or this output flux gate to drift more and more towards zero which causes the saturation to get drawn out less which means that it'll kind of find a little equilibrium point and it'll start fluctuating between these two this block is normally down but this is this this is an optional construction i like to refer to as a control rod for the draconic reactor it's hooked up to an and gate which has which is monitoring two more variables and when both of these variables are within acceptable parameters which is to say the the reactor is not running out of control this AND gate will activate which will cause this piston to push down and allow the uh, and actually allow this redstone circuit to complete and actually allow this output flux gate to actually output power so as long as this is retracted this is incapable of drawing power so it's a very good fail safe option so the first input into this AND gate is this stabilizer over here outputting the inverse of the temperature so as this rises this redstone signal will actually get lower and lower uh, so I have a potentiometer here from draconic evolution set to a signal strength of 2 subtracting this comparator because the way this math works is that when you split the maximum temperature of say 10,000 degrees into fifteenths that means that every three redstone signals will equal about 2,000 degrees so if we think about this at starting from 10,000 the signal strength will be zero as the temperature lowers to 8,000 that will equal a signal strength of three so if this temperature ever exceeds 8,000 degrees this comparator will be outputting a signal strength of less than three or two or lower in this case which will be cancelled out by this potentiometer causing this redstone signal to uh, turn off because remember we want the uh, s the steady state for any redstone signal to be off so whenever this redstone line is off we want that to be the favorable state that will cause this AND gate to 
turn on and essentially turn off this redstone torch and retract the control rod. The other end of the AND gate is hooked up to the same injector, so it's running on the same thing as the shield, or it's running on the same thing as the injector is, which is the shield mode. So as this lowers towards zero, this uh, this comparator will start to decrease in signal strength, and this is also hooked up to a potentiometer. I believe it's of it's a it's also of signal strength too. So the same thing over there, except for the shield strength. So if the shield strength ever falls below uh, twenty percent, which is the value denoted by three redstone uh, or a redstone signal strength of three, if it ever falls below that, this comparator will turn off, as it has here, because the containment field is technically below zero. This will this comparator will turn off. This whole redstone line will turn off as it currently is right here, and it will turn off the um, AND gate and retract the control rod. So these two lines right here are actually completely optional. It is possible to run the reactor with just this line right here and just this line right here, but these two add a little bit of extra complexity to help keep the reactor from going overboard. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, refill this with just two ingots. Uh, I'm in a spatial storage cell so that if this explodes it's of no consequence. Uh, I'm going to charge the reactor. And another great thing that, that, that this favoring a low signal does is that it'll just flood the reactor with 500,000 RF per tick or whatever this low value is right out of the gate while it's charging until this reaches like right about to here until the containment field reaches about 50% then it'll kind of slow down but it, it's a good way to also help the reactor charge very quickly so now that our shield strength is above 50% this line has now activated activated the AND gate and put the control rod in place so now we are perfectly capable of drawing energy out of this and you'll see that we're actually attempting to draw around 933 RF per tick out of this reactor but remember that's only because the saturation is at 98% this is very quickly going to fall but just to be safe and because I don't want this exploding in my face I'm gonna set this to 500,000 so now we're attempting to draw around half a million RF per tick out of this thing we're also attempting to put around 308,000 RF per tick into this at around 50% shield strength so I am going to go ahead and activate this this is going to settle at around 30% saturation, which is going to cause the core temperature to rise. Notice that we're not running this based off of... We could be running this based off of temperature, but I prefer saturation. That's just how I prefer to run my reactor. You could easily switch this from saturation to negative temp, so that as the temperature rises, this redstone signal will start to decrease and uh, decrease the energy being drawn out of the reactor. So either saturation or negative temp is what you want to run this output flux gate on. Either of those is okay. I just happen to prefer saturation uh, running over this. So now we've reached an equilibrium state, so I'm going to go ahead and start increasing this high value. I prefer not to increase this low value because that means that even if, like, say this redstone breaks, it's still going to be trying to draw energy out of the reactor, which might not be what we want. So I know that this can be stable at about 800,000 max, so now we're drawing the energy saturation lower. Now, of course, because this is only capable of stepping the output in chunks of 0 to 15, this is a very rudimentary control scheme, but it works. So I'm going to demonstrate the control rod in action now, so I'm going to bring the intentionally bring the core temperature up to above 8,000 by slowly increasing this high value here. Now we're drawing 240,000. We're at a saturation of about 19. I think that at around this conversion level, usually below 11% saturation is when you start going over 8,000 degrees. So we're just going to slowly increase this with the intent of getting the core temperature up to 8,000. I'm going to start stepping this in bigger chunks. The saturation is starting to settle at lower and lower values because as this goes higher, see how it's trying to find 240,000 RF per tick? This might be at, or, uh, at redstone level 3 before when it was at like 500,000, but then it might be a, a completely different value that it settles, that winds up settling at 240k with a higher value. That's how the saturation is getting lower, but we're still drawing the same amount out. 2 million will be our max value now. We're up to 7,300. 
got a nice good amount of containment field strength. I'll demonstrate both of the control mechanisms in action, but I'll do the containment field last, because obviously that has the highest uh, opportunity for failure. So, once this goes above 8,000... Oh, you're gonna ride that line, aren't you? There we go, we're approaching 8,000. I might have done something wrong here. So... That's a value of 2. Actually, I see this should probably be set to 3. So now, I'm going to increase this to 230,000. It's essentially just plugging in values until this reaches. So now, once this... See there? You, you can hear the piston deactivate. So the moment this crossed that threshold of 8,000, this line decreases. The AND gate, therefore, deactivates, and the control rod retracts, giving you a momentary reprieve. So now it'll kind of fluctuate between the uh, between about 7,500 and 8,000, and this will also provide a sort of auditory alarm to tell you, hey, you're running your reactor a little bit too hot, you might want to decrease this max temperature here a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and do that to about there, and now this is starting to settle. So now I'm going to demonstrate the other half, now that, now that that's out of the way, I'm going to start just decreasing this bit by bit. start decreasing the maximum input of this to around here. This is only running with about two ingots of fuel, so this is a very small reactor. That's why even a like even a hundred, even less than a hundred thousand RF per tick is able to keep the shield at um, fifty percent. I might actually increase this by a little bit. Or this. No, I'll, I'll leave it as it is. Uh, 80,000. I'll decrease this amount to 10,000. And our goal here is to get this to below 20% shield strength. going to drastically reduce this just so that we, once we do achieve this goal, we're going to, we're not going to immediately explode. So, there we go. I'm just going to set the maximum to zero. This is containment field strength, 50,000. Slowly step this down. 34. And basically the reason that this is also set to reduce the control rod is such that when that retracts, this will stop generating power. So the saturation will rapidly rise, the temperature will decrease, and this that'll just serve to reduce the load on the shield. Obviously, if something prevents RF from reaching this reactor entirely, there's no real safety measure that's going to save you because it requires a constant tens of thousands of RF per tick. So this is this is just for reducing shield load by uh, retracting the control rod more than anything else. Granted, if you can't supply this uh, a reactor like this with 30,000 RF per tick, there we go. See, there it goes. So now this is going to provide another auditory alarm saying, hey, your shield strength is too low. So these, so these two that I've just demonstrated basically provide an optional additional security measure. I'm going to bump this back up to 500k. Um, so th these two basically provide an optional control method to shut down the reactor. Unfortunately, there's no way to tell the reactor to shut off on a redstone signal. That would be ideally what this should do. Instead of just retracting the control rod, this would ideally go into a, a redstone circuit that tells the reactor to shut off, but unfortunately redstone signals are incapable of doing that, so I can just so the only thing I can do with that is to tell it to stop drawing power out of the reactor, which is essentially the same as temporarily shutting it off. So that's pretty much the... This is pretty much all you need. 
the, these two circuits right here, just a comparator block, redstone block leading into this, set to either saturation or negative temp, and these can be your your maximum and minimum values you want to draw from the reactor. I'd remember, I'd recommend setting that to zero. So the minus temp and saturation are going to be your drive values for the output, and shield uh, is going to be your driving force for your input because ideally you want this to be running on a low signal and this to be running on a high signal such that if any of this redstone circuitry gets damaged the redstone circuit and when the redstone circuit breaks it'll actually send the reactor toward a favorable state instead of an unfavorable one and then these uh, this is actually a potentiometer set to signal strength of two and this is also and this is set to signal strength of three so uh, these comparators are set to subtract, and then these lead into an AND gate, which then leads into a sticky piston that should be allowing, that should be completing this circuit only when activated, such that when, once again, if any of this redstone circuitry gets damaged, it retracts it, system favors, or system drifts toward a favorable state when circuitry is damaged. So that's pretty much all you need to run a draconic reactor pretty much almost completely safe using nothing but vanilla redstone circuitry com uh, comparators, pistons, and whatnot. So uh, I hope that provides a pretty good demonstration of just how powerful vanilla redstone still is with this mod.